Well, praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. My name is Pastor Philip Steele, and uh, I want to welcome you uh, as we continue to learn about how to receive uh, from God by using the instrument of faith. You know, God has given us so many blessings and so many provisions in our covenant, but they are not automatic. God designed these provisions to be accessed by faith. And that's what we've been doing over the last several broadcasts. And that's what we're going to discover more of even today uh, uh, as we deal with this subject, the framework of faith. But I, I want you uh, to be sure and have the whole eight-part series, all right, that we've entitled The Framework of Faith. And I encourage you uh, to, to order this because it'll help you receive from him and receive from the word of God. And uh, it comes with a study guide that contains all the outlines, all the points. Uh, it even has study questions uh, that you can use in your personal study or maybe in a small group setting. Uh, 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 you know, maybe you're a, a minister in the jail system or, or a small group leader or something of that nature. Uh, men's group, women's group, it would be ideal uh, for that uh, uh, because it's, it's, it's just such a wonderful resource. And I would also encourage you to order my book, uh, Every Day is a Faith Day, which just basically goes back to the basic applications of the Word of God and, and ultimately, as we said, a practical guide to steadfast faith. It will help you grow in the things of God and help you apply your faith just on a practical, steadfast, uh, in a practical, steadfast manner. And, uh, you know, if you have not yet become a partner, I'd like to encourage you to partner with us today uh, here at the Faith Builders Broadcast. Uh, a, a, a partner is just somebody that partners with us financially on a regular basis, a monthly basis, a consistent basis, to help us spread the gospel and help us change another person's life. Uh, it is so important that we continue to get the word of faith out to people that need it and that we continue to get these messages of how God's word can change your life into other people's lives. And as you partner with us on a consistent monthly basis, you help us do that. And for your partnership, uh, I want to send you my wife's book, Pressure No Problem, absolutely free. This is her first book. Uh, it is filled, chocked full of important information, life-changing information that will help you look at every circumstance that you deal with and boldly declare pressure no problem. As soon as we get your information, we'll send you this book uh, uh, free of charge as our gift to you for becoming a partner. The information is there on the screen, and you can certainly become a partner today. So we want to continue with the framework of faith, and we're dealing today with the subject of being equipped and fitted by God's Word. Uh, Hebrews 11.3 is a scripture that means so much to me because uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 26 years ago, uh, the Lord said to me, I was sitting in uh, a little apartment that we had uh, in a, uh, uh, a little town called Grandview, Missouri, and uh, we were seeking the Lord about what God wanted us to do with our life and our ministry and the direction that we needed to go. And I still remember where I was sitting. I was sitting in a chair in the living room and the Lord said, turn to Hebrews 11.3. And Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And the Lord said, the vision for your life and ministry is to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And so every time I quote that scripture, it just means so much to me because that is the uh, foundation scripture of what God has asked us to do with our lives. My wife and I, what God has asked us to do uh, in our ministry is to build faith and frame worlds by the word of God or build faith and equip and fit people's lives by the word of God. That's what that word frame in the Greek means. 
It means to complete thoroughly, to repair, uh, to adjust perfectly, uh, to join together, or to be fashioned, to be arranged, or to be put in order. So through faith, our lives can be repaired or adjusted or perfectly joined together, arranged or put in order through faith. Uh, amen. The, the Wiest Bible by Kenneth Wiest says, by means of faith, we perceive that the material universe and the God-appointed ages of time were equipped and fitted by God's Word, notice this, for the purpose for which they were intended. For the purpose for which they were intended. If you're going to accomplish the purpose that God intended for you to accomplish, it requires you framing your world by the Word of God. It requires you being equipped and fitted by God's Word for that intended purpose. God uses unseen words to create what He wants. In the beginning, God used unseen words to create what he wanted. Hallelujah. Now, this is so important because God created us to operate that same power of words. Very often, uh, when people think about words, especially in maybe the circles that, that uh, we're involved in, word of faith people, people of faith, uh, people of the word, and you talk about words, you talk about using your words, uh, very often they will uh, uh, limit that to, I don't want to say anything negative. I want to be positive with my words. You know, there are even elements of the world that will refrain from speaking negative because they don't want negative things. But words, yes, will bring you negative or positive results, but words are building blocks. Words are the creative structure that God uses to create the life that he intended for us to live. Uh, Romans 10.10 10 says, with the heart man believes. Faith is of the heart. Faith is of the heart. With the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With our mouth, we make confession to establish our will. All right? When, in, in the context of what this scripture is saying, when a person heard the word of God and came to the understanding that they needed to be born again, well, they believed that in their heart. And then they established their will with the confession of their mouth. I make Jesus my Lord. I confess that Jesus is my Lord. And by doing so, they became saved. It said, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Unto or towards. All right? The word unto is a preposition that indicates the point reached or the point entered. So when you believed in your heart and you confessed with your mouth, that confession brought you to the point that you were desiring. It caused you to enter into what you said. God did the saving you entered into the saving by your confession. God does the healing. I enter into my healing by my confession. God does the prospering. I enter into my prosperity by my confession. 
When I declare I am, I am abundantly supplied, I am completely filled, I have all my need met, there is no lack, I walk in abundance, that confession is not just something positive that I'm saying as a positive confession to try to make something happen. That confession is something that I am declaring and I am entering into what I'm saying. I'm confessing, I'm making that confession unto prosperity, unto healing, unto victory. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that? Words are what are produced by the tongue. Words are the fruit of our tongue. Proverbs 18.20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied, notice this, by the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, he will be filled. This is important because it's telling me that this satisfaction comes from what I'm saying. When, when you use the, the, the words, for instance, I have abundance and no lack, you're entering into the satisfaction of abundance and no lack by the fruit of your lips. Now, the same principle applies when somebody says, I don't know what we're going to do. We just can't make ends meet. There's never enough, there's never enough money at the end of the month. We're always coming up short you will have dissatisfaction by the fruit of your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that? A man's belly will be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. What you say is more important than what you have. What you say is more important than what you see. If you see lack, it is more important that you say and you call and you confess abundance than it is what you see. What you say is more important than what you feel. You may feel sick. You may feel weak. You may feel debilitated. But what you say is more important than what you feel because what you say can change what you see and what you feel. Oh, glory to God. One day, the Bible says, we'll give an account for our, our words. And every day we live by the words that we choose. Matthew 12, 35 through 37 says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every w idle word that men shall speak, he will give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So Jesus said to do what? To direct situations and natural things with words. Jesus said, direct them with words. And he said, every idle word I will give an account for. That, that when he says idle words, that's every idle, non-operative, non-working word. In other words, people will say things that they don't mean just flippantly. They'll just say words. They'll, they'll say things they don't mean. Uh, uh, the Bible calls it crooked speech or froward speech. The Bible says we will give an account for those words. Why? Our words are designed to make something happen or stop something that is happening. Words are the most powerful things in the universe. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he said, therefore, I, truly I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have 
whatever he says. Now, please notice and be aware. He did not say, say he will have the good things he says. He said you'll have whatever you say. Whatever you say. This is so important. If I'm saying it, I'm going to be having it. Your spirit does not know the difference between things you want and things you don't want. Somebody can say something that they don't want, their spirit doesn't under, does not know the difference. Because if you say it, your spirit understands that you want it. And Jesus said, if you, he used the illustration, if you speak to the mountain, the mountain will move. If you tell it what to do, it'll do what you tell it. You'll have whatever you say. But if you talk about the mountain and you say the mountain's not moving and you say the mountain isn't going anywhere and the mountain's getting bigger, then the mountain's going to stay and the mountain's going to get bigger. You can either tell it to go and it'll go or you can tell it to stay and it'll stay. But it's up to you through your words. God will perform his word. Ezekiel 12, 25 says, For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I speak will come to pass. It will no longer be prolonged. In your days I, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Jeremiah 1.12. It says that God is watching over his word to perform it, to accomplish it, to bring it forth, to advance it. You are built, you are produced by the word of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, Being born of again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord that liveth and abideth forever. I am built, I am produced by the word of God. Everything in my life is built or produced by God's word. Acts chapter 20, verse 32, Paul said, Brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The word is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Oh, glory. One of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. One translation says it's like a hammer that breaks the rock of most stubborn resistance. So notice this. This is so important. I want you to get this. Ever how stubborn the situation is, the word says that if I keep speaking the word, the word will break that. The moment you spoke the word into your situation, the word of God compromised that situation and compromised the strength of it and begin to bring about a remedy in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. James 1, 23 says, If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man that he was. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he is blessed in his deed. So the word is like a mirror. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. Notice, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So notice this says that when I look in the Word, it's like looking into a mirror. Let me use this example. For instance, there are people that, uh, that love the Lord, but here's what they will say. They'll use this phrase, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just an old sinner. Well, if they would take the Word of God which is a mirror, and look into the mirror of the Word of God, they would see this picture. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You were the servant of sin. 
Sin will not have dominion over you because you're not under law, but you're under grace. Beloved, now are we the, the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. They would see this, as Jesus is in this world, so are we. Do you see that? When you look into the mirror of the word of God, you may see a different picture naturally than the reflection you're seeing in the mirror. Let me give you some advice. Say what you see the reflection of and not what you see in the natural. Say the image, the picture is showing you and not what you think, see, or feel in the natural. When you look in the mirror of the word of God and it says you are the healed of the Lord, say what the mirror says and not what you see in the natural or what you feel in the natural. Because what you see in the word, if you declare the reflection that you see in the mirror of God's word, you'll begin to have what the mirror is showing you. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Your words are your agreement. What you say is your agreement. Amen. When you say, I'm failing, I can't catch a break, nothing ever goes my way, you're, you're coming into agreement with that. Amen. And that's what's going to be produced. But when you look in the word of God, the mirror, and it says you're more than a conqueror, you can do all things through Christ Jesus, that you're the head and not the tail, that you'll be ahead only and never be below. You'll be above only and never beneath. You're coming into agreement with that. And what you're seeing in the word will begin to be what you're seeing in your life. Oh, glory to God. See, that's giving the word a voice. That's taking your faith and building the framework of God's word in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, maybe you're watching today and you say, Pastor, you know, I, I, uh, what you're saying sounds good and everything that you're declaring, I, 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 I would like that to happen in my life. But you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the first step. And we read it in Romans chapter 10. It says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be born again. So I want to lead you in that, that statement right now, that prayer, if you will. If you're watching and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's very simple. Just say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died and that he rose again, that he is alive today and seated at the right hand of the Father. And I choose right now to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me and cleansing me and becoming my Lord in Jesus' name. You know, if you said that prayer with me, according to the word of God, you're born again. You have become a new creature. In Christ Jesus, old things are passed away and all things have become new. You're now part of the family of God. You're my brother or you're my sister and you've become God's own children. You know, if you said that prayer with us, be sure and write us, email us, let us know some way that you have made Jesus the Lord of your life. And uh, we would like to help you. We'd like to pray for you. We'd like to make sure that you are as successful in your walk with God as you can possibly be. It's such a joy to come to you each week and share these life-changing truths. Once again, uh, please order the entire eight-part series of The Framework of Faith. It comes with a study guide that includes all of our outlines, all of the points. It'd be an excellent resource uh, for a small group or a teaching session that you may be doing. You can also order my book, Every Day is a Faith Day, a, a practical uh, application 
of your faith, teaching you how to do that on a consistent daily basis. And if you've not become a partner, please consider becoming a partner today. And when you become a partner with the ministry, we want to get this free resource to you, my wife's book, Pressure No Problem. It will help you look at every circumstance and every situation in your life that may be trying to bring pressure, may be trying to bombard your mind, and it will help you say with full faith and full assurance, pressure is no problem in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for all of your, your, your partnership with us. Thank you for the letters. Thank you for your financial support. You're such a blessing and such a help to us as we spread this word of faith to our city, our state, our nation, and our world. Be sure and join me next week for the next part of this series, The Framework of Faith. And until we see you then, please remember to keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. God bless you. Do you feel like your faith is weak? God has given you the ability to develop great faith because it is the method that God has chosen for you to receive every benefit He has provided. But faith isn't automatic. We have to establish the structure of God's Word in our hearts to operate faith correctly. Pastor Steele's eight-part series, The Framework of Faith, is exactly what you need to begin establishing a strong foundation of faith in your heart. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20, you will learn how to operate the power of words, how God's Word will equip your life to produce, how faith provides a shield of protection, how faith works like a weapon, and much more. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get Every Day is a Faith Day, a practical guide to steadfast faith. This book gives you a detailed outline of how to build strong faith. Since the Bible says the just shall live by faith, we need to know how to maintain a supply of faith and ensure that our faith is effective. Available for just $12, this book will help you identify the things that hinder your faith so you can stand against the enemy and experience God's best. If you want to be strong in faith, this powerful book will help you. Don't miss the special offer, the framework of faith and or the companion book, Every Day is a Faith Day, a practical guide to steadfast faith. Call now or go to buildfaith.net to order. We want to say thank you for watching Faith Builders and would like to invite you to become a partner with this ministry. With your partnership, you help make it possible for the Word of God to be spread across the world. You can call us at 1-586-5080 or visit us online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242-692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Together, we are building people's faith and framing their world by the Word of God.